Hello YouTube, today we're gonna be watching 10 best jungle champions to play in season 12 with no one other than Virkayo as the announcer. I don't know if he was the one that made the list, but he's the one announcing it. I also don't know if this video is made so it's like top 10 or if it's just 10 equally placed junglers, but um, let's just start the video and I see we start off with Vi. Surprised about that. The arcane show on Netflix really did give her a boost to her play rate, but as I've been talking about on my own channels, Vi has been a hidden OP for quite a few months. Reliable, Agreed. easy to use, a button that can make even Vayne dread the fact that she's facing you. That's the lockdown ultimate for those of you who don't know. As such, her kit gives you huge reliability, and reliability is the most important in terms of loading a jungle and maining a jungle from game to game. Now it's not just against veins that you might have issues, if there's an OP mage, if there's a hyper carry like a Kog'Maw, if you are facing a Soraka and you want her to feel the pain that your team feels every time Soraka bails her team out with an ultimate, that point and click ultimate will always deliver. Now the thing about Vi is, with those quality of life buffs they put in a few patches ago just to make things more reliable and standard, again, key word there, that Q win max is more than just a great knock up engage tool. It simply allows you to move around the map and through walls very, very efficiently. And if you want to make sure you are dealing True. with damage I mean, and having the most there's a little bit of risk using tanky, a Q over walls, the but... Gauge build with the Hail of Blades rune set is of course your standard go-to, but you can maybe flex into the Eclipse if you want a bit more bang for your buck, but remember, Remember, you will be more squishy. And even though she's not the most played on high elo and she's kind of fizzling out a little bit in terms of popularity, remember, if you want a champion to carry your placements with, she will do it almost better than anyone else. And now I know a lot of you are thinking and watching high elo VODs, watching streams and thinking, hey, why didn't you start with talent? Oh, you need- Yeah, I mean, Vi is pretty solid. Um, I would put her in the top 10, probably like in the lower end of the top 10, but pretty solid champion. I mean, she did get buffed. And she seems pretty good. The only downside is if... I mean, it kind of depends. She's basically like an all-in type of champion. Which means that she's kind of weak from behind. Because she doesn't have really any utility. I mean, she can peel, but... Mainly she just wants to go in. So if you fall behind, she kind of is, like, bad. But uh, if you're, like, just even or ahead, the team is really, really strong. And, yeah. The point and click ult just uh, makes team fighting a lot easier from, from ahead. Talon, Talon is Omega broken for sure also on my top 10 list. The champion that can clear as fast as a Karthus and parkour over every wall across the map and rotate faster than a Hecarim and basically had zero downside in the Conqueror Gore Drinker meta. Well, his recent success and meta domination, that didn't stop whatsoever. Talon just became more Talon in Season 12 and so right nerfed his bonus damage to monsters for 150% to 130%. Which Where doesn't that really matter. Season high elo where, you know, being able to farm and gank at the same sort of speed and tempo. Nerf didn't matter. Back to farming when things are I mean, it affected him. Really his clear is a little bit but slower, but... You, yes, you won't be able to clear as fast. You won't be able to is still good. In the jungle, but you can still gank very easily. You can still get around the map very easily. You still have burst damage and a get out of danger ultimate if you need it. You still have that rake slow on the W. You still have a gap close on the Q. And of course the bleed damage damage passive. What this does is gives you the ability to carry every game even if you can't farm as fast as the previous patches. And yes, you can in theory still go Conqueror and Electric Dude. Those are good rune sets, but the assassin build of choice. Yeah, no, don't go Conqueror. Page, go First Strike or... Movies, um, market for extra cash money go First Strike or Electric Dude. Do not go Conqueror. Or Ultimate Hunter. And then, and then go Eclipse. And then go Eclipse. Don't go Prowler. You know you can go Flash Ignite on your summoner spells in addition to the Smite, but that you are still going the Eclipse Ghostblade meta. That's right, turns out a max HP damaging movement speed granting shield gaining low cooldown passive item coupled with a ghost blade movement speed boost. Yeah, that's a really potent assassin combo for survivability and of course annihilation. Follow that up with an edge of knights, the ruler's grudge, axiom out depending on what the game state is and you're looking at something that will carry any game. Now, Viego has to be... Talon for sure in my top 10. Uh, quite high up there actually. He's not like my number one, but he's probably like in top 3, top 5. Uh, personally also a champion I would love to learn, but... I probably won't if I know myself right. Um, when it comes to the build, for Talon, start off with Ghostblade and then go Eclipse. Reason why is because Ghostblade is really good with the bonus movement speed that you get. And Talon already has a lot of mobility with his E. Combining that with more movement speed means that no one is basically safe on the map because Talon can be anywhere in the map in 20 seconds from any point. Uh, so Talon, for sure, insane jungler. Insane jungler and 
Yeah, for sure in top 10. The absolute next champion we talk about. His stats never Viego. really represent how strong he is because a lot of people still build Crit Viego did get buffed. It seems okay, but nothing special in, the in my notes opinion. Here we have from Obelix discussing champion Riot place remove and with a cheeky smiley face. You know what? I can kind of agree with it at the same time it's the champion I coach the most and see the most in all the scouting. At the end of the day, is he fun to face? Always no, but is he fun to play? Of course. OP things tend to be fun to play when you're, you know, face rolling your keyboard and killing everyone. Wow. Viega has been nerfed from his Giga Auto Heal passive a few months ago, what he greatly benefits from in terms of maining is that he has a plethora of first clears and itemization choices. Maybe you're in a bit more of a higher elo or in a more serious situation like a Flex 5's Try Hard moment or a Clash game and you need to be a bit more sustained. Following your Divine Sunder and Sterex Gauge Conqueror rune set will always carry you true. However, ever since the original nerfs on his healing, you know, from a base 8 to 3%, and right amping more visibility to scale with crit, the shield bow is the best item. Item, and that item really, that item yep, needs to be I agree. Please riot. But it Trit Vigo is better now. And the ability to kill him so because of the one item spike and the damage is simply unnatural. So don't go uh, divine sunder sterics. The tanky build is not good anymore. Sundra, it's I mean, it's okay, but not as good as because of the healing, because opinion. of the executes, and that's just healing from itemization. If you're having a blade of the rune king, a shield bow, things like that. But now you slap in a soul possession, and people are tilted. And don't always think you just need to do a five camp. You can go red raptors grump into impact very, very easily. Look to diversify your playstyle with Viego, look to diversify your itemization, and you will have immense success in Season 12. Next up, we have to talk about Lee Sin. His yeah, Viego, pretty solid champion. Uh, he's nothing crazy. Like, I'll definitely say that Vi is, from the three champions we've seen so far, Vi is the, like, worst, but he's not bad. Uh, Viego is, like, the second best, and Talon is the best. And then I see Lee Sin. And I can already say Lee Sin is not... If I would made a top 10 jungle list, I would not recommend Lee Sin. Because people... In order to play Lee Sin, you need, like, m pretty good mechanics. Um, you need to do the combo, like, clean and execute them properly before the champion is even good. And if you can't even do the combos, then the champion is just straight up bad. So the champion is good, but the amount of skill that you need in order to play Lee Sin is it should it's gonna hit like one percent of the player base but on the other hand i see maybe 15 20 25 percent of the player base playing the champion and uh yeah most people just can't play it or shouldn't be playing it uh, and should just practice it more before playing it so this would not be my top the 10 most dominant, the most jungle. popular the most pleasing to watch in china he's so popular they give him splash shots for his chromas now is he really struggling in this general meta ever since the conqueror nerves and ever since his direct nerves yes he is but then you know they just buff conqueror again gold drinker is looking actually fine because you know we're not apparently allowed to have no gold drinker no conqueror for a little bit so go watch your high elo games he is still dominating the game and honestly you can go eclipse as well you can go full of assassin if you want i'm not telling you and silver to necessarily go spam 100 games of lee sin he is a high skill ceiling pick he is fun to play but you have to understand he works better the higher elo you are you don't innately scale into the late game like a lot of other champions on this list you don't have the same sort of impact if you are behind but because of course you have item diversity you can go tanky if you need to you There's can go eclipse if you like want textbook, or like a carry lee sin you but then do you don't you fall off even earlier compared to the gold ring build most of you would not expect nunu and willem yeah, I would not put Lee Sin, uh, just because of the skill ceiling. Uh, if you wanna play some early game champions in lower elo, which I don't personally recommend. Um, reason being that even if you get ahead early, it's not really guaranteeing you a win. Basically, because people don't have good macro and will often uh, throw in low elo. And on top of that, there's champion bounties, and now there's also objective bounties. So... Yeah, just don't play Lee Sin. Nunu, on the other hand, pretty good champion, just pretty boring, but tanks right now are pretty strong. for season 12 with the removal of the AFK farm meta, thank goodness. Map mobility and early ganks are what get your laners ahead, make them happy with you, and of course, get you ahead. And if you didn't realize you can go AP Nunu, I guess, but itemization. Do you want to go AP full on damage giga one shot mode? You can do this. You have a Lulu Jinx and you just simply want to give the Jinx a bit of passive while you peel and disrupt and annoy? Go full tank. Obviously that itemization was boosted and that's still the best default way to carry. And Face rush is okay. Dark harvest if you go full AP is also okay. Tank or full damage. But the huge benefit to Nunu in this case, obviously the objective control, obviously the river patrol ganking up and down. 
I'd say if you have like a duo, uh, Nunu is not a bad champion. Playing it in solo queue, in my opinion, can be quite boring. But if you have a duo who plays like a carry champion, pretty good champion. You just camp your duo and then kind of 2v8 carry the game. Now I have to talk about Graves, unfortunately, because he always Graves. finds a way to be dominant. Now Wright will know if his pretty strong champion. Uh, has sadly been nerfed over and over again, but is pretty strong. And then they do, Would and also be in my top 10 list, but maybe like that top 5, top 7 area. Kind of like the Viego. One thing I need to say about the, this is... Um, so this room page right here is completely fine to go for if you go shield bow build so please do not go ghost blade into shield bow if you go for the shield bow build you want to go these runes and it's fine but then you go shield bow into blood first or into infinity edge it's a lot better it scales a, a lot faster you only need three items compared to four to reach your power spike or if you like the Ghostblade part of Graves build, you can go Lethality Graves, which is what I am personally playing. It doesn't scale as well as the crit build, but it snowballs quite a bit harder and it one shots. And um, yeah, what I do with it is I take Electrocute and then uh, Sun Impact, Eyeball Collection, Relentless, and then secondary I take Inspiration with Features Market and Cosmic Insight. And then I go Ghostblade, Eclipse, Cyril the Scrotch, and then already at like two or three items i basically start one shotting the enemies it doesn't scale as much but it's pretty fun to play and yeah graves is definitely also in my top 10 uh junglers to play he's not that easy to play though because um, pretty much all of his abilities are skill shots like his q w and r are all skill shots you need to kite really well with your passive and uh, e passive so not the easiest champion to play but not as difficult as the Sin. So if you have some mechanics, you can play it. If you don't have mechanics, stay away from Graves in my opinion. Sin Sao on the other hand, really good champion. For sure also in my top 10. I will say though, there are three different Sin Sao builds. There is uh, the Conquer one with uh, Gore Drinker and Sterex, which is like the Tank, Bruiser type of Sin Sao build. And then there are two Carry Sin Sao builds. One with they're both with lethal tempo one has eclipse into essence reaver but my personal favorite is shield bow into essence reaver into infinity edge going full carry mode since so i think it's actually pretty good uh and with you're of course quite squishy but with your ulti you're not really taking any damage from ranged champions and you can pretty much one-shot people and if you get on top of someone then you just heal like crazy and you still have the shield bow passive that makes you a little bit tankier so you're not just completely squishy so that's the build that i personally use but there are three different builds i just like carry builds more in general than utility builds overall but since i'll for sure top 10 jungler play this champion really really good champion if you want to do a level 2 gank or a 3 camp gank or a 5 camp or even a full clear, you can still do these things. While he isn't as strong as he has been in that recent dominance, his early ganks, his pressure, his damage, his self-healing, his skirmish power, and honestly, that underrated teamfight ultimate make him an S-tier great jungler for all of you no matter what exact playstyle you want to play. Unlike Wouldn't put him in S-tier. Like Maybe like A+. Plus. True to the Conqueror Triumph, Alacrity, you can even go last stand as the last rune if you want, booties into Cosmic Insight, that is the most default room page for all champions with gore drinker sterex gauge flex into your sort of wits ends gas and death stance and enjoy so that's the, the utility bruiser build it sticks also really good to main, one of the best really ap journalists in the game always finds himself relevant in the meta and yes even as a power farmer the most important aspect of fiddle six though is while you can go the nerfed predator rune because he was going it before it was buffed anyway first strike is looking like a very appealing rune set as well i'm not a fan of dark harvest i haven't tried first strike on fiddle I so i don't know if it's good Electrocute and first strike as your core three. You really Electrocute like is pretty good. Predator, pretty good. First strike. So I haven't well. tried it. Day, uh, someone to told me the that they tried first strike. But just like thinking of first strike and fiddlesticks, it doesn't seem that good. Game 
Make that sure you can only really get gold post six. Grub, your in your red, get that down as low as you can. Look for opportunities. So yeah, I don't know. Early, of course, but when you get I'll probably just go execute or uh, angles, predator. But one of the best AP joiners in the game. Quite simple champion to play. Uh, has really good full clear. Um, yeah, I would definitely recommend him. Three months for all elos. Can also one v nine carry honestly. Really annoying champion to deal with. In, uh, it's really annoying to push against the fiddlesticks because he always flinks. This really wasn't no particular order. Please don't think it's a countdown or a counting up. But the second last champion we have here is Kha'Zix. As I like to call Kha'Zix the Eternal, because no matter the meta, no matter the pretty good champion. Of course, did get nerfed, but um, still viable. For sure, viable and low elo. The higher elo go, he's not as strong, but still relevant. There are many different playstyles. There's the Ult WE with Prowlers, there's QWE in lower elos, there's First Strike, there's Dark Harvest, there's Electrocute, so... All these different kinds of evolved parts available to you, mostly in high elo, you go W second for sure. It's just a case of do I go Q or R first? And then you say, right, what shall my rune set be? Do I want to go electrocute? Dark Harvest. First strike assassination page, much like our talent friend, except in this case, you would go sudden impact and maybe ravenous. The relentless and ultimate hunter are just as good. And then once you've decided that and decided your playstyle, now we can flex our itemization. Do we want Dusk Blade, Prowler's Claw, or Eclipse? Yeah, any all the assassin and the items are quite strong. And in any meta. I was told by my coach that um, the ghost play is also good on him first. Echo also and really strong AP jungler. That you know. However, for me, the best thing about this champion is while it's not a hard farming meta anymore, it gives him a bit of catch up in terms of his own clears, which are slightly slower. However, that clear speed does have an exponential curve. It's that when a lot of champions are looking to have good impact early, at least get a few ganks pre six, the best counter gank in the game, bar none, is Echo. If you can track an enemy jungler to a gank, if you can understand where they're pathing, and you wait for them to use their gap closer, their flash, or what have you, and you throw down your 2.25 second stun W. That is absolutely free real estate, and honestly, when you do that, now you can activate your snowball potential, become impossible to shut down because of your ultimate, because of the rocket butt mobility, because of your zonias. You can absolutely pop any carries and squishies without being punished. And what's that? You didn't quite get fed and you went Nash's tooth because the enemy team's a bit tankier and you want split push component? You can do that as well. The ultimate and original OP shifty snowball kit from a few years ago is here to carry you in season 12. And there you have it, 10 junglers for you to main in season I agree with all the genres except for uh, Lee Sin. He did say that it's in no particular order, but I kind of like put them a little bit in order at least. Uh, the one thing I want to say about Echo is uh, don't go Lich Bane on the champion. Go for Nash's Tooth because it's a lot more value. The only thing that Lich Bane does for Echo is that it gives a little bit like extra damage in terms of burst damage. It's like 150, whereas Nash's Tooth gives you both attack speed and ability haste and spit pushing potential um, which is just overall better on Echo so if you play Echo do not go Lich Bane it is pretty much a bait uh, instead do go Nasser's Tooth in the situations where you're thinking about going Lich Bane pretty good video I agreed with um, most of the champions um, the runes and the builds obviously I have a different way of playing the champions um, so you don't have to copy the ones that were shown on screen. You can kind of just do your own research, which you, sh which you should always do. Um, or you can just copy the ones that, uh, that I mentioned, because I think that they are pretty good. But pretty good video. Shout out to Mobilitics and Virkayu for, uh, for the video. And uh, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what your top 10 jungle champion list would look like for season 12 in the comment section down below. And if you liked the video, remember to leave a like. And if you want to see more content, subscribe. And otherwise, I hope to see you guys in my next YouTube video or on my next live stream on Twitch. See you guys.